Hey y'all, Irix Guy here. Welcome back to another Time Pieces for Tomorrow video. And today I'm wearing the Tudor Black Bay Chrono Inverted Panda, or the Tudor Reverse Panda. So I want to talk about within this video why Tudor has such a horrible perception problem, but how Tudor is overcoming that perception problem. So let's kind of step back here, and I'm going to read a quote. And this quote is from Hans Wilsdorf. Now Hans Wilsdorf not only created Rolex, but he also created Tudor. And when he created Tudor, and I quote Mr. Hans Wildorf, it says, For some years now, I've been considering the idea of making a watch that our agents could sell at a more modest price than our Rolex watches, and yet one that could attain the standards of dependability for which Rolex is famous. I decided to form a separate company with the object of making and marketing this new watch. It is called the Tudor Watch Company. So that's how Hans Wildorf founded Tudor. So when you introduce Tudor with a, uh, with a quote like that, it often makes people think, you know, second tier. It makes people think discount. It makes people think subpar. It makes people think, oh, they made a compromise if, if they choose to buy that watch. And granted, when Mr. Hans Wildorf uh, created Tudor, those were his, those seemed to be his intentions. I mean, he's, as, as I just quoted Mr. Hans Wildorf, that's exactly what he said. But today, Tudor is a little bit different. And we're going to look at, uh, I'm going to flip over the, the camera here, and we're going to look at some Tudor timepieces from the Black Bay series close up. And we're going to talk in a great amount of detail as to why Hans Wildorf's vision for, and obviously Hans Wildorf has passed away. He's, he was an older guy. But how his vision for both Rolex and Tudor has changed and how it's changed primarily due to what I'm about to show you here. So, what we're looking at now, we're looking at three watches. Can you guess which one's the Rolex? That's the first thing that's, that's interesting about Tudor nowadays is that, you know, looking at these timepieces, you probably thought, oh, well, is that the Rolex? Look at what it says on the dial. It says Tudor. Tudor Geneve. And then you look at this one. Oh, that does say Rolex on the dial. And then you look at this one. And it says Tudor. So, Tudor nowadays, thanks to, and by the way, both of these Tudors are part of the Black Bay series. This is the... Uh, Tudor Black Bay 58 with the navy dial with the navy bezel, and this is the Tudor Chrono Reverse Panda or Inverted Panda, meaning that the primary dial is black and the smaller subdials are kind of a whitish silver. So they call this the Reverse Panda. They also have what they call the Panda, and again, these are nicknames that watch collectors give them. But the Panda would be a a white primary dial with black uh, subdials. So this is a very popular reference, very hard to find. And again, this is part of the Black Bay series. Black Bay, as you can see here, the, uh, the logo. So let's talk about the branding. So on the crown, you have the uh, Tudor Rose. And then on the, on the uh, dial itself, it, below the 12 o'clock position, you have the Tudor Shield. So Tudor uses both. You know, sometimes they'll use the Shield only. Sometimes they'll use the Rose only. But that's, those, are, those, are their, uh, those are their logos. And when you look over at the, uh, at the Tudor Black Bay 58, you can see it's got the shield on the dial, and then it's got the Tudor rose on the crown. So, you know, very, uh, very different from the Rolex, which uses the crown. Obviously, it's got the Rolex crown on the dial, and then it's got the Rolex crown logo on the, uh, on the crown as well. And just a fun fact, those three dots, that means trip lock. So this is a Rolex, Rolex trip lock crown, and we'll discuss that within other videos, but obviously this is the iconic Rolex Submariner. This is the reference 114060, which is the uh, Submariner without a date, and it's at the time of filming this, it's the previous uh, reference Submariner. There's a more current Submariner. This one's 40 millimeters. Uh, the most current is a 41 millimeter and also has a has a uh, greater power reserve in it. But you can see all these timepieces, and you know, obviously this says Rolex. 
This uses a, Rolex uses a different type of steel, and I don't want to misquote, was it 912L, and then the Tudors are uh, lesser, 316L, and I say lesser, not saying it's a problem, it's just a different type of steel. Rolex is known, has always been known for not only their steel that they use in their, uh, in their uh, stainless steel sports wristwatches, but also the uh, precious metals that they use in their precious metals pieces. Rolex, I mean, everything is, is top tier with the materials, with the finishings. But, you know, with that being said, let's, let's flip over here to Tudor and look at these. So when you look at the case back of the Tudor, and this is the Black Bay 58, uh, Tudor, and it's very important to mention, let me get that in focus there for you. See, it says Tudor, uh, it says Tudor Geneve Caliber Manufacturer. Tudor uses in-house movements now. The case back, you can see this is an oyster style case back, just like you would uh, like you would expect to find on a, on a Rolex. This is like an oyster style bracelet. I mean, looking at the inside of it, you know, versus the inside of the Rolex Submariner's bracelet, you can see how how all of these, uh, let me get that in better focus, there you go. You can see how all of these design elements are so similar, and that's because obviously Tudor is the sister brand of Rolex. So, you know, you're getting, and I don't want to misquote, it's either a 70 or 72 hour power reserve in this Tudor Black Bay 58, and then also in this uh, Tudor Black Bay Chrono. So they're using very, uh, very advanced technology now in the Tudor. Tudor is no longer a compromise like it was in the past. And uh, we're, we're going to talk about Tudor in the past here in a minute. But uh, Tudor today, they're using, they're using high quality case finishing, high quality movements. Uh, they're using, uh, you know, this is not a jingly jangly bracelet. This is a solid filling bracelet, just like you get on a current reference Rolex. Even Rolex bracelets in the past, they had, uh, you know, they were jingly jangly. They were cheap, they would stretch. Now Rolex bracelets are top tier. And, you know, also that top tier quality of the Rolex bracelet has been passed down to uh, Tudor. You know, Tudor's, this Tudor right here, this Black Bay 58, and then also the Tudor Black Bay Chrono, these Tudors are better in my opinion, than the initial reference Rolexes. Because the initial reference Rolexes, they didn't have the nice bracelets. They didn't have the more advanced movements. And granted, more advanced movements, that comes with time. They didn't have any of that. And now, Tudor, Tudor now, if, if, you, if you pitted this against an old reference Rolex, you know, before the current references, it used the solid in-link bracelets, the, the, uh, many of which use the uh, ceramic bezels, just really high-end uh, components and movements, these Tudors are better than the original Rolex references. So Tudor has already surpassed the old-school Rolex from a technological perspective and an overall build quality and finishing perspective. So with that being said, you know, this Tudor today this is better, and again, we're not talking dollars here. You know, I don't want to center any of my comments around the price of vintage Rolex versus the price of, of current reference Rolex or the price of current reference uh, Tudors. This is not what that's about. It's just about the actual design and perception of the product. But if you held, and I challenge you to do this, if you can go into a pre-owned pre wristwatch dealer, hold a current reference Tudor, such as the Black Bay 58 in your hand, and then get an old school vintage Rolex Submariner or similar Rolex timepiece and, and you know just with the the feel of the product in your hand feel the difference and you're probably going to feel that Tudor is so much better so with Tudor you're getting those vintage style those old school design elements the aluminum bezel insert that should develop a pleasing patina over time you know you're not getting all of the at least currently, you're not getting all of the precious metals. This is, I think these are, is it rhodium that they use for the, for the indices on, on this Tudor? I mean, obviously, I know with the Submariner, they're using white gold for the hands and the, uh, and, and the indices. And then also within the graduations here on the ceramic bezel on the Submariner, there's platinum. So, you know, even your non-precious metals Rolex pieces, they utilize a small amount of precious metals. With Tudor, you're getting a more utilitarian finish, you know, just more basic materials. You're getting that awesome bezel action 
with the uh, Black Bay 58 like you get with the Submariner. The Tudor is a 60 click bezel, meaning that it's 60 clicks to get from 12 o'clock to 12 o'clock or whatever position you're at to whatever position you started at. This has 120. So if you go from 12 o'clock to 12 o'clock, there's gonna be 120 clicks, whereas the Tudor Black Bay 58 has 60. You know, just subtle differences. The bezel action of the Submariner is arguably the best bezel action in the watch industry. And with that being said, Tudor being uh, Rolex's sister brand, just as good again, but it's, it's a different feel, it's a different sound, because this is 60 clicks versus 120. So there's differences. And a lot of these differences in the past with Tudor have been, uh, have been exaggerated. And I think part of that, oh, and another thing, the Tudor bracelet, although it's an oyster style bracelet, it utilizes these, uh, these uh, rivets, these faux rivets. And that's a point of controversy. Uh, and of course, on the Submariner, you don't have rivets or faux rivets on the side. You just got a smooth edge. So these, these Black Bay references, including the Black Bay Chrono, they use the faux rivets. And that's been a point of controversy. And talking about the way that Tudor has tried to differentiate itself from its main brand, it's the Crown Rolex, you know, they've, they've done things like that. They've added small things to the bracelet, although from afar, one would see this and they would think, oh, that's a Rolex, because they see the bracelet. They're like, that's an oyster-style bracelet. But upon closer inspection, you see the, the, uh, the rivets on the side. and say, like, oh, okay, that's a Tudor. Tudor didn't used to use in-house movements. Tudor now uses in-house movements in most of their pieces. This one is a Tudor manufacturer movement in the Black Bay 58. Uh, so is the uh, Tudor Black Bay Chrono. Now, this is a Tudor in-house movement, but for this particular timepiece, Tudor had a relationship with Breitling, another very good wristwatch manufacturer, and they got Breitling's B01 movement. But Tudor didn't just drop in Breitling's B01 movement. What they did, they took that B01 movement and they added like a, I think a, uh, a uh, was it a Paracrom hairspring? Anyway, it's an anti-magnetic hairspring. They, made, they applied some other enhancements so even though this is not a true Tudor in-house, it they still call it a Tudor in-house because Tudor had a movement swap deal with Breitling, and then Tudor further customized the Breitling B01 movement, which is very nice column wheel and vertical clutch, very nice movement. So this is a very, you know, Tudor has has upmarketed themselves because now you're seeing in-house movements, now you're seeing better bracelets, you're seeing better overall designs. It's it's similar to Rolex. You know, one could look, for example, with this. I could say, okay, that looks like a vintage Rolex Submariner, and that's the appearance. Now, as far as the uh, as far as the it, you know from from an appearance perspective, it looks like a vintage Submariner. But it's a vintage Submariner lookalike with modern technology. You know, the movement and the uh, the bracelet and the finishing that we just talked about. You know, and someone may look at this and say, oh, that's a that's a Daytona. It's similar to the Rolex Daytona, but this is, it's a slightly larger case. It's got, the dial is different. This has two sub dials instead of three, and this also has a date. So it's different than the Samaritan, I mean, than the Daytona, but it's still got a similar, for someone that's not super familiar with wristwatches, they could see this and say, oh, is that a Daytona? But for collectors, they'll, people will know, oh, okay, that's, that's a, uh, you know, that's a Tudor Black Bay Chrono. And if people really know it, be like, oh, that's an inverted panda or a reverse panda. So, you know, these share similar DNA with Rolex. And I mean, just looking at the cases, you can see down here the bracelets, the cases. You know, there's very similar design characteristics. So it's, uh, you know, Tudor is now not the outlandish brand that they've kind of been in the past. And speaking, Tudor of, the, speaking of Tudor of the past, and I'm going to, I'll just flip up a few photos here. Tudor historically has released what, in my opinion, are some very undesirable references, you know, as you can see here. And, you know, that's not a strike at Tudor in any way, but it just shows how far they've come and how Tudor Black Bay has enabled Tudor to uh, reemerge as, uh, as an interesting brand. Now, I'm going to flip back to my face on video here, and I want to talk about something else. Now, this is extremely interesting. I'm going to pull it up because I don't you know, I never want to misquote uh, these these celebrities and uh, you know historical figures. Uh, this right here is actually Archibald J. 
Chesterfield III, AC3. Now, you need to check him out on YouTube. You need to subscribe. Tell him that this video on uh, Irish Guys Adventure Channel sent you. You know, Time Pieces for Tomorrow. Tell him you're watching Time Pieces for Tomorrow on Irish Guys Channel. And, you know, you came here because of that. And he'll appreciate that. But it's YouTube.com forward slash Archie Luxury. Now, Archie Luxury, if you're not familiar with Archie Luxury, Archie Luxury is, in my opinion, the most influential wristwatch person in the world. He's based out of Australia. He's been making videos at the time of filming this video, which is uh, almost 2022. It's actually December the 31st of 2021. But Archie's been making videos for a long time. I think actually probably before 2009. I don't know exactly when he started. You can ask him, but you know, head on over to youtube.com forward slash Archie Luxury and check out his videos. But one of the most famous quotes that, uh, and, and Archie's got a ton of famous quotes, one of the most famous quotes that Archie Luxury has, uh, has made, and this was in, within one of his videos, I think he was shopping for Rolex stainless steel sports in an airport when he made this quote. Check out all his videos and you'll be able to find it. But Archie Luxury said, everybody wants Rolex steel sports. And that's true. You know, people want a durable watch. They don't just want a durable timepiece. People want a timepiece that they can swim with. People want a timepiece they can wear to a wedding and then jump in the pool. Well, don't jump in the pool drunk because that could be dangerous. But, you know, they could go swimming after the wedding or whatever and not have to worry about it. You know, and that's why a Rolex is, is you know, Rolex stainless steel sports, such as a Rolex Submariner, just one example. I mean, you got the GMT, you got the Explore 2, you know, the list goes on. And some people might even say that Oyster Perpetual is a Rolex sports watch. Some people will say differently, but there's tons of Rolex sports watches to choose among. And, you know, basically, you know, Archie has always preached, and, and I know he goes around the block, you know, he likes Patek Philippe and, and a few other uh, top-tier wristwatch manufacturers, but there's no doubt that Archie Luxury has done a ton of, for Rolex. He's, he's, uh, you know, he's positively promoted the brand. He tells you how it is. You know, Archie doesn't sugarcoat anything. AC3 Archibald, Chesterfield III, our pontiff. You know, he doesn't sugarcoat anything. He tells you how it is. And it would be hard for anyone out there that is a subscriber of Archie Luxury. And again, subscribe to his channel, youtube.com forward slash Archie Luxury. But it would be hard for anyone that subscribed to Archie Luxury's channel to say that he doesn't love and deeply understand the Rolex brand. There's no doubt about it. And if you watch his videos, you will probably come to the same assumption that I've come to, and that is that Archie, without a doubt, as far as a wear anywhere, you know, beater watch, uh, wear to certain formal occasions watch, you're probably gonna walk away with the assumption that Rolex is his number one. You know, if you're gonna do, as he would say, a one and done wristwatch, he would probably say a Rolex. He, and he might would say a Rolex Submariner, and that would probably be my guess, that he would probably go with the Rolex Mariner or some other Rolex stainless steel sports. So, you know, Archie Luxury has done a ton for the Rolex uh, wristwatch. Now, what he hasn't done is a ton for Tudor. You know, although Archie has, uh, has owned a few Tudors or Tudors or Tuners, as he might call them, you can always tell from his, from his presentation that when he's talking about the Tudors that he, that he kind of feels like there's a compromise there. You know, there's a visible hesitation. You know, there's, there's, uh, there, there's something about that tutor on the wrist that just doesn't feel like the Rolex on the wrist. There's something, there's something subpar, you know, it's, it's not that there's anything subpar about it, but it's just the, it's just the marketing, the excellent marketing that, you know, back to that quote that I read in the beginning of this video that, you know, Hans Wildorf, the founder of both Rolex and Tudor made himself, you know, Hans Wildorf's quote you know, to paraphrase that, you know, Tudor is just a more affordable Rolex. You know, that was his, that was his initial reason for creating Tudor. But now Tudor, that's not the case. And part of that is because Tudor has, whether they meant to or not, you know, Tudor has created the Black Bay lineup, which is highly desirable. It doesn't look like a compromise. It doesn't feel like a compromise. It's a very high end and nice wristwatch without all of the let's just call them blingy elements that Rolex, you know, Rolex now, excuse me, with the ceramic bezels and the use of uh, precious metals throughout, even in some of their stainless steel pieces like this, they have a shinier look. You know, they're more attention getting than a Tudor. 
You know, a Tudor is a more subdued tool watch. Both are tool watches, but the Tudor is a more under the radar watch. But because of Black Bay, what Tudor has done, Tudor has created a desirable timepiece. I was not interested in Tudor. You know, some of the examples that I flashed up previously within this video, I wasn't a fan of Tudor then. It just wasn't my style. You know, it was too, it was too weird. It didn't, you know, it didn't seem to share the DNA with Rolex. Uh, Tudor today with the Black Bay, I can wear this. It's just as comfortable as a Rolex. It has the Rolex design elements, but it's something that at least at this point in time, it's not nearly as expensive as the Rolex, so I can enjoy it more and not really have to feel somewhat self-conscious of what I'm wearing on my wrist and kind of be you know more careful. Because, I mean, I can wear this confidently. I can wear a Tudor confidently. And sure, I take care of all my wristwatches, but I can wear it confidently and not be as concerned as I go throughout my day that, oh, I might scratch this or whatever. So, you know, Tudor today is completely different, and it's different than what Hans Wildorf's vision seemed to be for Tudor. So now Tudor, and again, why does Tudor have a perception problem? Everything that I just said feeds into why Tudor has a perception problem. So Tudor's going to have to overcome that, and I don't think it's something they necessarily call, saw coming themselves. I think that Tudor is kind of the, they're, they're a product of their own success, meaning that, and, and let me just kind of break this down. So Rolex has become so popular even among the non-watch collecting community. You know, Rolex is a status symbol for a lot of people, nothing more. They could care less about watches, but they just want to walk into that board meeting with whatever Rolex on their wrist because it makes them feel more powerful or make them feel as if people will perceive them as being successful. So that's one of the reasons people wear Rolex. You're not going to see that same person buying a Tudor, at least today. You know, Tudors today, at least, are wristwatch collectors. People that appreciate the design, appreciate the quality, and know that it is a Rolex sister brand. So, Tudor's perception problem is probably going to be corrected by the current market conditions. So, we've got supply chain shortages because of the situation globally. But not only that, we've got supply, supply chain shortages for Rolex authorized dealers in Rolex boutiques. You walk into a Rolex authorized dealer, Rolex AD, or Rolex boutique, they're probably going to have next to no Rolex in stock. Now, they're probably going to have an abundance of tutors. Now, there's some tutors they may not have a lot of, or if any, and that's the Black Bay 58 and the Tudor Chrono. These are arguably, at the time of filming this video, the two most popular Tudor references, in my opinion. And you can do some market research, and it'll probably back up my opinion. So what I see happening here is Tudor will by default become more popular because people go into a Rolex store, they can't buy a Rolex, but they can buy Tudor. Tudor is great. They feel great. They look great. I mean, it's just as good as a Rolex to some degree. I mean, the level finishing on the dial, if you really want to nitpick, you know, the use of precious metals, that sort of stuff, it's a little bit, a little bit less, but it's not much less. I mean, and see, that's where you... you you put these on your wrist, you're not going to feel like you're making a compromise. If you're that person that wants to walk into the boardroom and feel like you're the boss because you've got, you know, the Rolex wristwatch that says Rolex on the dial, you know, Tudor's not going to work for you. But if you're a collector, Tudor's going to work for you and you're probably going to get one Tudor and you're probably like, man, I need more because you really, you're really going to like them and you're probably going to find, like I have, that you're probably going to wear those more than your Rolex watches. And that's not, that may not be the case, but at least that's, what's happened to me. So Tudor, out of, you know, due to the current situation, next to no Rolex watches for people to purchase, Tudor's still somewhat readily accessible, and that could change as they become more popular, but people are buying more Tudors now than they ever have. So as more people in the real world see people wearing Tudors, they're like, oh, what kind of watch is that? And they're like, is that a Rolex? No, it's a Tudor. Oh, okay, can I see that? Then they look at it, then they go buy a Tudor. Then you've got more people with tutors. More people are seeing tutors. Tutor becomes a more common name. You know, before the Black Bay, except for your wristwatch collectors, people, when you said tutor, they didn't know what you were talking about. They're like, is that some sort of royal family or something like that? You know, they didn't know. Now Tudor has brand recognition. So Tudor's developed brand recognition. Tudor has in house movements. Tudor has better technology in their movements because they're in house. They've got better case finishings. They've got better bracelets. You know, Tudor could, has, in my opinion, not talking about dollar amounts, but Tudor, in my opinion, has surpassed 
the vintage Rolex. You know, the original Rolexes were created. Tudor today is much better. Better bracelets, better movements, better case finishings. So, you know, Tudor's already done that. Tudor has not surpassed Rolex, and I don't think they ever will. I mean, Rolex is always going to be the crown. You know, Rolex is always going to be at the top of the ladder. That's what Hans Wildorf wanted. And I'm sure that all the leadership that has followed in his footsteps probably want the same thing. But that doesn't mean that we won't see the rise of, of the Tudor brand. You know, again, Tudor is, they've got a perception problem. But this, all of these conditions, and... You know, everything that I've discussed within this video and then more, you know, comment below. Tell me what you think. Share with the world. But all of these conditions have led to Tudor's newfound success, newly found success. And it's going to get bigger and bigger. And, and honestly, and I'm going to make a very bold prediction here. And, and this, you can laugh at me. But I think we're going to see a third, a tertiary uh Hans Wildorf Foundation brand emerge because I think what we're going to see Rolex is going to be so upmarket. Tudor is going to replace what Rolex used to be, which was still upmarket. You know, it hurts when you got to buy one of these. It, you don't have to buy one, but when you buy one, it's got to hurt a little bit. But it's going to get to the point to where Tudor will then be in a financial place that Rolex previously was, and Rolex will be so high up there that you know it's only going to be a small percentage of people that would even be able to purchase a Rolex. So that's going to open up the necessity, in my opinion, for a tertiary uh, Hans Wildorf Foundation brand. So I think we're going to see a third brand emerge in the near future. You know, Tudor's going to replace what Rolex has been for the past 10 or 20 years or so. Rolex is going to become its new up on the pedestal, hard to get, long wait list. Even if you can get one, it's going to be astronomically priced. But then there's got to be that junior brand, you know, the brand that is kind of the gateway into wristwatches. And I think we're going to see, uh, I think we're going to see that brand emerge. And something I didn't mention earlier, when you look at the dial of both the Rolex and the Tudor, R-O-L-E-X, T-U-D-O-R, both are five letters. You know, all of this from a, from a branding perspective was strategically planned. You know, from afar, you see that five letter word on the dial. You know, and you just look at the design of the wristwatch, you may not know if it says Rolex or Tudor from afar. I mean, it's a pretty small print, pretty small font. So, you know, they've done a lot of things to make these watches hard to distinguish. Is it a Rolex or a Tudor? Now, I'm a seasoned watch collector. I feel that I am. So I can, I can look at a watch and within a few seconds be like, oh, is that a whatever? And I don't say the brand. I, you know, I recite the reference. Is that a blah, blah, blah? So, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's an interesting situation. This stuff excites me. I've always been interested in marketing. I've always liked wristwatches, especially since, you know, I started watching Archie Luxury's videos when all that I had was, a, was a, an Omega Seamaster 300M pre-coaxial blue wave dial. Fantastic timepiece. But, you know, Archie, his videos opened me up to so many different brands, including Tudor. You know, I always knew about Rolex. Who doesn't know about Rolex? But... You know, he opened me up to uh, to Tudor and Jager Lecoute. So, you know, it's it's uh, it, it's an interesting thing, and and this this excites me to see what's going to happen with Tudor. And I'm really excited to see at the time of filming this video. Again, it's January the 31st of 2021. I'm super excited to see what Tudor will release in 2022. I know there's strong rumors suggesting in January of 2022 that both Rolex and Tudor are going to increase their prices probably across the board, all references. But I'm excited to see where Tudor is going to go because if Tudor, if Rolex allows Tudor to continue to add more technology to their offerings and make their, their, uh, their wristwatches more visually appealing and more technolo technologically appealing, I think we're going to see re Tudor really start to go up market. You know, and again, to fill the gap that, you know, the space that Rolex once dominated because Rolex is going to go up, 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 up market. And I think part of that is that we're going to see, and, and today with the Pelagos, Tudor Pelagos, we do see a matte ceramic bezel. But I think we're going to see uh, Tudor or Rolex lighten up the grips and be like, okay, well, you know, maybe we can put ceramic bezels in more uh, Tudor watches. You know, maybe they can, maybe they can give, start to give Tudor the ability to add more precious metal finishings to the dial. You know, make them more 
Rolex quality without saying Rolex on the dial. And I think they'll probably do that because they'll quickly realize how popular Tudor has become and how they can make Tudor more upmarket. I mean, they can have, you know, like they did with Rolex, an entry level Tudor tier, and then they can have the more upmarket Tudor tier. And then obviously the same with Rolex, but the entry level Rolex tier is going to be super upmarket, and then the high level Rolex is going to be super duper duper upmarket. So I think because of Rolex's success, how upmarket it's become, it only makes sense. They've got to have that more accessible brand. And again, in the what seems to adhere to the vision that Hans Wildorf originally had, you know, stick to those, stick to his perceived vision, but now, you know, don't treat Rolex as that, uh, as that uh, poor person's uh, wristwatch or this, or the compromise or the poor man's Rolex, whatever you want to call it. You know, Tudor will, will escape that stigma. You know, it's, it's, it's a situation today where people, you know, they might think, oh, okay, well, you know, the Rolex people, they eat fine meals every day. And then the, uh, the people in the, in the basement or whatever they want to call, you know, working for Tudor, you know, they're just out there eating fast food and, and, and creating second tier wristwatches. And, and that's, that, that false perception, in my opinion, is about to change because there's no, again, there's no arguing that Tudor has a perception problem. But there's also no arguing that Tudor Black Bay has enabled a new, a new, a new Tudor brand image to emerge. And we're still on the cusp of it. But I think things are about to get very exciting. If you're interested in wristwatches, I think they're about to get very exciting. I hope you enjoyed this video. I enjoyed filming it. Again, I want to give another shout out to Archibald Chesterfield III, our pontiff. Without AC3, we wouldn't know anything about wristwatches. I mean, he is the, he is the, uh, I guess the best way to put it, the most knowledgeable wristwatch person in the world. So again, subscribe to his channel, youtube.com forward slash Archie Luxury. Tell him that Time Pieces for Tomorrow sent you. I have deep respect for him, always have for many, many years. And uh, I just hope you all enjoyed this video just because I enjoy, I enjoy wristwatches probably as much, pro well, actually probably not as much as Archie Luxury because I think he's probably the most passionate wristwatch person in the world as well. But I enjoy wristwatches, but he's, he's someone that, you know, just takes it to the next level. So hope you all enjoyed this video. Be safe. Uh, comment below. Tell me what you think. Do you have suggestions for upcoming timepieces for tomorrow videos? Comment below because I'm always looking for new video ideas. Appreciate your viewership. Be sure to subscribe. You're looking for cool sweatshirts like I'm wearing here, t-shirts, coffee mugs, pint glasses, and more. Look down below. And if you're a wristwatch dealer, and you're looking to partner up with someone, I'm looking for a wristwatch dealer, pre-owned wristwatch dealer that can provide me access with wristwatches to review, please contact me. The best way to contact me is facebook.com forward slash iRickScott, or you can just comment below, and then you know I can, I can reach out to you because I'm definitely looking for, uh, for a relationship with a pre-owned wristwatch dealer so that I can have access to, uh, to an abundance of wristwatches to review. Y'all have a good day. Hey y'all, Captain Irix Guy here. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to subscribe. It's youtube.com forward slash Irix Guy. And ring that bell icon when you do to be notified whenever I post another video. Thanks for your viewership and y'all have a good day.